In these next couple of videos, we just want to work through some examples where we get to use the remainder theorem to help us evaluate functions. Uh, take, for example, this guy. Uh, we have f of x is equal to 3x to the 6th minus 25x to the 5th plus 70x to the 3rd minus 50x squared plus 5x plus 101. And now we need to evaluate f of 8. You could do it the long way where you replace all of the x's with 8 and that's going to get really messy, right? Imagine 8 to the 6th power. Don't even want to think about that. Instead of plugging in 8 to all of these, this is where we get to use the remainder theorem. So, the remainder theorem says that when I do synthetic division using this input value, the remainder will be the same as if you had evaluated the function, in this case, at 8. So, we put our headings here like we've been doing. There's k. This goes all the way up to x to the 6th, so x to the 6th. Count down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and your constant goes at the end. Remember, <clears throat> we can't skip any terms. Okay, there's no skipping allowed. So my k value is exactly what you see, and that's 8. I've got 3x to the 6th minus 25x to the 5th power. Then it jumps to 70x to the 3rd, so that means I have 0x to the 4th, positive 70x to the 3rd, minus 50x squared, plus 5x, and plus 101. So with this synthetic division, what I get right here for my remainder is what f of 8 equals. So all the numbers I get here in the middle, I don't really care about. That's just part of doing synthetic division. That's part of the process. I care about the number that's here at the end. So as with all synthetic division problems, we're going to bring down this lead coefficient 3, and it's all going to be about multiply and add. So multiply times that k value, I get 24. Add, and I get negative 1. Multiply times the k value again. We get negative 8. 0 plus negative 8 is negative 8 times k. So we get negative 64. Combine these guys, we get positive 6 times 8 is positive 48. Negative 50 and a positive 48 gives me negative 2 times that k value of 8. We get negative 16. 5 and negative 16 combined to give us negative 11 times 8 one final time and we get negative 88. So 101 minus 88 is 13. So that tells us, and this is how we are to express our final answer, that f evaluated at 8 is equal to 13. That's it. We don't actually have to replace all of the x's with 8. That's what the remainder theorem allows us to say, is that the remainder is that function value. Pretty simple. You know, I, I try to go through it slowly, but the more of these you do, the easier it is for you to, you know, figure out um, how, how to move through this quickly. It just becomes this pattern. And one of the key things you have to remember, because sometimes I forget, is that you've got to bring this lead coefficient down. Don't change it, just bring it straight down, and then multiply times the k, and so on. And if we do that, we should be in really good shape. Okay, so let's do another example. We got a few more examples to run through. Really shouldn't take us too terribly long to do that. I'm not saying they're all the same, but you know, it kind of gets to be a, a pattern, it gets to be a habit. So f of x equals 4x to the fourth plus 8x to the third minus 7x squared minus 9x plus 13. And I want you to find or evaluate f, f of negative 1 half. So we go through the same process. We're going to do synthetic division 
because I think that's going to be a lot easier to use synthetic division and the remainder theorem as opposed to plugging negative one half into all of those variables. All right, so here's k. We go all the way up to x to the fourth, so count it down. Four, three, two, one, and then we have our constant term. Okay, just need to extend that a little bit. Let me go ahead and put a little box right there because that's where my answer is going to be. My k value is exactly what you see. When you're doing remainder theorem and you're trying to evaluate, that is your k value. So that's negative one half. I've got four x to the fourth plus eight x to the third minus seven x squared minus nine x and positive 13. All right, first step, bring down the four. And now we multiply times the k. So one of the things to remember when you've got fractions is that they're just numbers. So I've got a negative times a positive. So I know my answer is going to be negative. I've got this one half. Uh, the best way of seeing this is to take this four and divide it by two. And that's what multiplying times one half is. You can multiply times one half or divide by two. It's still the same thing. So four over two is two. Combine and I get six. Multiply times negative one half, first of all. Negative times positive is negative. Half of six is three. So we get negative three. Combine these, we get negative 10. Multiply times negative one half. Negative times negative is positive. Put that positive there if that's gonna help you with your signs. And half of 10 is five. Combining these, we get negative four. Multiply times negative one half one last time. Negative times negative is positive, and half of four is two. Fifteen and two, or excuse me, thirteen and two is fifteen. So we know that my function evaluated at negative one half is fifteen. If I were to give you a problem like this on, on a test or a quiz, I'm going to make sure that the numbers aren't outrageous. I try to make sure, like I'll work the problem beforehand to make sure that numbers don't get out of hand, uh, to make sure that um, if we're dealing with fractions that we deal with nice numbers along the way. I'm nice like that. You're welcome. All right, let's take a quick break and uh, see if you can take care of the last two problems on this handout um, before you watch the next video. I'll see you then.